In this video, we're going to teach you everything you need to know about suburban yard drainage. If you live in the suburbs and you have a yard drain problem, we're going to explain that and we're going to give you all the details to how to fix that. Now, if the developer had to turn in these plans with drain easements in order to build all these homes, how do you get approval to build all these homes if there's all these water problems? Well, let me explain. It starts right here at the storm sewer. The storm sewers are tied to nothing. The storm sewers are there for bulk water which is basically flood water. If the conditions are a flood and there's standing water running through the backyards, through these swales, the top of those basins will take in that flood water. As far as all the water that's stuck on the property lines and down the side of the house, those basins aren't going to do anything for you unless you do a French drain system and a roof runoff system and you get it directly to that storm drain. In this video, we're going to show you how to do all of that. Now, keep in mind that your roof is a non-permeable surface, meaning you're not going to lose any of that water over that square footage. All the water that falls on your roof is going to end up in the lawn. So now you have a high concentration of water in your green belt area. You have to remember your green belt area is taking in water already from the rain. So now you're taking in twice as much water for a given square footage, typically, of a green belt in the suburbs. So we're going to show you how to build two systems. We're going to show you how to catch all your rooftop water and run that in the same trench as a perforated pipe for a French drain. We're going to help you dry out your entire yard. We're going to give you a lot of tips to keep you out of trouble. So stay tuned. Don't skip around. Stay to the end. Now, make sure that you always build your French drain on your property line. Be very conscious of the property line. It's really easy to end up just a few inches over on your neighbor's property. Make sure it's on the inside of your property line in the event that somebody gets a fence. You don't want the fence company to put the fence posts right through your drainage pipe. I've seen this a hundred times. It's one of those things that a lot of people don't think about. They talk with the neighbor and then they make this ag agreement. Sometimes they'll even share the cost of the French drain. Next thing you know, they're putting it right on the property line, right where the fence company is going to sink the posts. I recommend two pipes across the back property line. You have all these neighboring properties and all their water running towards the storm drain. You want to collect all that water. As you get closer to the storm drain, that water is building up and it becomes quite a bit of water. If the storm drain can't keep up and it backs up, you end up with some on-site storage. So you don't have to look at a flooded backyard until the storm sewers catch up. There's definitely some things to know about the roof runoff system. It's really important that you tile tape all the connections, and I'm going to explain why. If at every connection point throughout this system it's leaking water, then when you have tree seeds and tree buds and pollen and all this debris floating through the system, you're not going to be able to float it out of the system. This is how corrugated pipe ends up with a bad rap. People don't do this. If you have leaks at every connection, you're losing pressure. If you don't have water pressure and water volume, you're not moving debris. It's just going to lay in the pipe. The water's going to run out through all those connection points. All right, so let's take a look at the two systems side by side. You have your roof runoff system, which is your solid pipe, and you have your French drain system, which is your perforated pipe. They can share the trench. Think of that. No additional work to add the second system. Just a little bit of extra material. Not too bad. Now, notice there's no tape on this connection. It's the French drain pipe. It's full of holes. You're not trying to keep up volume and water pressure. You're not supposed to be flowing debris through that French drain pipe. Now here's a solid pipe for a roof runoff system. We have it all sealed up so we're not losing water pressure and volume right there so we can keep floating tree seeds and tree buds all the way to the discharge end or catch basin or basin pop up. Now I'm going to show you how we tie in a downspout to this main line. The guys do a really good job here. So you want an inline catch basin always because if you have a shingled roof you want to catch all that shingle gravel. You don't want it in your main line. You want to shop vac this out once a year. That's it. Very little maintenance. You'll never have a problem. Never have a flooded yard. Never had a flooded basement, a flooded crawl space. It's so worth it. Now, remember to always wire your connections. Wire connections. Don't use a T. It just slams the water to a stop. Use a Y. It keeps the direction of flow. Notice how the guys taped up all the connection points. Again, so they don't lose their water pressure and the water volume. Now, we love this super sticky, super stretchy 200-year tape. It's going to last for 200 years. It's rated for that, and it's so easy to work with. We love these 
catch basin hybrids. It's a catch basin pop-up hybrid. It's really nice and easy to stick your hand down in there and grab tree seeds and tree buds a couple times a year. Then all the water is going to run right into these two perforated pipes. The rest of the system is done in perforated pipe doubles all the way to the storm sewer. Now we're going to show you the proper way of backfilling this system. You got to really make sure that you do this correctly. You're going to want to work as a team and you're going to want to stand on the pipe and you want to hold it down with the shovel because the stone's going to want to get under your pipe and then raise your pipe up. That beautiful 1% slope that you put on that pipe, you're going to lose it if that happens. You're not going to have the flow rate. You're going to lose the velocity. Now make sure you do not fill the stone all the way to the top. You got to leave room for sod and dirt. You want the grass to be able to grow on top of the fabric. You're going to fold the fabric over and pin it and then put dirt and sod back on. If you found any of these tips helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until the next video.